Hello and welcome to another episode of The Mindset Forge, a podcast where we discuss the best ideas of humanity, the most useful practices and the most skillful means for developing a more well-adjusted and adaptive mindset. To do this, I will be discussing latest science, ancient philosophy that has stood the test of time, as well as the thoughts and actions of important historical paragons. The goal is to give you tools and practices and ideas for your self-improvement with the goal of moving ahead the entire humanity. Our discussion will focus on the ideas and practices with the most cash value, so practices that are easy to take up but hold enormous potential. And since most of these practices have to do with changing your thinking and attitudes, they are completely free. Call me Laurent Lohel, I will be your host, and welcome aboard. Also, make sure to like Mindset Forge on Spotify and YouTube, as well as check out our Discord server, where you can find links to my book, which you can buy on Amazon, to support my another side enterprise of being a fiction author. Without further ado, let's get to the episode. Mindset Forge, episode 25. Now I think different how to deal with being the only sane person around. I began to get the feeling familiar to me from my bartending days of being the only sane man in a nut house. It doesn't make you feel superior but depressed and scared because there's nobody you can contact. Will Denison of the book and the hippos were boiled in their tanks by Jack Kerouac and William S. Burroughs. Welcome to the season finale of Mindset Forge, good listener. Today we embark on a journey that's perhaps one of the most personal yet universal experiences, the feeling of being different. Picture this, you are in a vast sea where the waves flow in one direction and there you are trying to swim against the current. It's exhausting, often lonely, but there's a fire inside you and conviction that pushes you to carve out your own path. And that's what being different can often feel like, a relentless battle against the tide of societal expectation and norms. And yet, amidst these challenges, there's an unparalleled reward to being different. The reward of self-discovery, the acceleration of forging your own path, and the unparalleled beauty of viewing the world from a unique vantage point. But why does society press so hard for conformity? Why is there this innate desire to fit in, to mold ourselves according to the expectations of the collective? From the clothes we wear to the careers we pursue, there's often a blueprint that's laid out for us. And straying away from this blueprint, well, it's not always met with applause. Throughout history, though, many thinkers, philosophers and rebels have challenged this blueprint. They have raised their voices against the monotonous drone of conformity, encouraging others to embrace their individuality. Nietzsche, Younger, Emerson, these are but a few names in a long list of luminaries who dared to be different and urge us to do the same. So, as we dive deep into today's episode, let's explore both the trials and the triumphs of that standing out. Of refusing to be just another fish in the sea, let's uncover the strength, resilience and brilliance that lies in being different. Picture this. Alex, a regular 20-something working a 9-to-5 job. Weekends were the escape, the time to let loose, hang out with friends and more often than not indulge in a couple of drinks. It's a routine many of us are familiar with. The constant anticipation of Friday night, the relief of being able to momentarily shed the weight of weekday worries and revel in the short-lived euphoria of weekend parties. 
But as the weeks turned into months, Alex felt a change within, a growing sense of dissatisfaction, a nagging feeling that there might be more to life than just living for the weekends. This wasn't about detesting fun or becoming an ascetic. It was about seeking something more meaningful, something more enduring. So Alex decided to embark on a new journey, a quest for better health and fitness. The gym became a sanctuary not just for physical growth but mental growth too. Nutrition plans replaced late night pizza orders and early bedtimes took precedence over late night partying. Now you'd think that personal growth would be met with an animal support. But here's the twist, when Alex started declining invitations for nights out, eyebrows were raised. Friends joked, what's more important than spending time with us? And that's when it hit Alex, the very act of prioritizing oneself, of seeking more than just momentary pleasures, had inadvertently set them apart. The weekends that once symbolized freedom and fun now felt like a loop of fleeting hedonism. It was like being on a carousel that spun too fast, accelerating for a while but leaving you dizzy and disoriented once it stops. This isn't to say Alex judged or looked down upon those who reveled in it. No, it was just a personal realization that there was more to see, more to achieve, more to live than at just those brief spells of ex escapism. And so, without ever intending to, by merely choosing a path of self-betterment, Alex became different. A subtle outsider in a world that often celebrates the now more than the what can be. And as many of you might relate, it's both a challenge and an opportunity. The solitude of being different, but also the joy of breaking new grounds. It's a tale as old as time, but ever so relevant in today's age. How do we cope when our aspirations and priorities shift? How do we navigate the intricate dynamics of societal expectations while staying true to our unique journey? Stick around as we delve into the subject. Philosophical perspectives on non-conformity and individuality. One cannot delve into the philosophy of non-conformity without discussing Nietzsche, a figurehead for championing individuality and critiquing the herd mentality. Nietzsche's idea of the Ubermensch or Overman or Superman presents a vision of an individual who transcends societal norms and values to craft their own moral code. This figure, by its very nature, stands in stark contrast to the majority, who often exist within the confines of societal expectations without much introspection. The Ubermensch embodies the pinnacle of self-overcoming, creating values that can sometimes lead to feelings of alienation. Nietzsche's analogy of the mountain captures this sentiment succinctly. When you are ascending, it's the view from the bottom that allows you to appreciate the progress and distance you have covered. While the ascent is challenging the vista from the peak, the vantage point of self-created values and purpose is rewarding. Henry David Thoreau Thoreau's retreat to Walden Pond epitomizes a conscious decision to reject societal norms in pursuit of self-awareness and genuine existence. In his work Walden, Thoreau writes of the beauty of solitude and the importance of living intentionally. For Thoreau, being different wasn't about defiance but a quest for authenticity. He underscores the notion that being true to oneself might demand distancing from the masses and their routines. Albert Camus Venturing into the realm of absurdism, Camus gives voice to the inherent conflict we face. Our search for meaning in what seems to be an indifferent universe, his protagonist Mersault in The Stranger defies societal expectations at every turn. He doesn't mourn as one should, he doesn't adhere to the emotional norms society expects, making him a stranger not just to society, but to the very constructs of societal conformity. Ralph Waldo Emerson 
Emotions clarion call for self-reliance and individual intuition resonates deeply with our topic. In self-reliance, he speaks to the power of individuality, stating, quote, to be yourself in a world that is constantly trying to make you something else is the greatest accomplishment. For Emerson, trusting one's own intuition and voice, even if it risks societal alienation, is paramount. These Western philosophers, through their writings and lives, provided a profound commentary on the essence of being different. They emphasized the intrinsic value of individuality, even when it clashes with societal norms. Their works serve as a testament to the rewards of pursuing one's path, irrespective of the challenges and feelings of alienation it might bring. Eastern contemplative traditions on being different. The ancient wisdom of Tao Te Ching, authorized by Lao Tzu, provides a wealth of insight about navigating life in general and especially in a human society. Its verses, rife with natural imagery and profound reflections, have valuable lessons for bringing one's inner aspirations and outside expectations into harmony. One of the most striking verses in the Tao Te Ching is the notion that what is a bad man but a good man's job? What is a good man but a bad man's teacher? At its core, this statement underlines the interconnectedness of all beings. Instead of viewing others with disdain or annoyance, Due to differing aspirations or behaviors, this Taoist wisdom suggests seeing them through a lens of compassion. Every individual, no matter how contrary to our beliefs, presents an opportunity, a lesson, a reflection, or even a chance to exhibit patience and compassion. The Tao emphasizes leading by being, not by preaching. Rather than overtly trying to change or guide others, simply embodying one's principles and values can serve as a silent, potent lesson. When one stands firm in their convictions, especially when they seem to diverge from the majority, it can, over time, inspire others to introspect and perhaps even alter their path. It's natural human tendency to feel resentment or frustration towards those who don't understand or even mock our choices. Yet, the Tao teaches that all things and beings have their place in the grand tapestry of existence. Instead of harboring negative emotions, recognizing the impermanent nature of pleasures that many chase can instill a deep sense of compassion. After all, if one has found a path that leads to enduring contentment, it's a cause for empathy, not antipathy, towards those still ensnared in transient joys. Every interaction, no matter how challenging, offers an opportunity for gratitude and self-reflection. Those who might seem against us can often be our most significant catalyst for growth. As the Tao suggests, by witnessing the fleeting nature of certain joys, one can only reinforce their conviction in a path that promises deeper, more lasting fulfillment. In conclusion, the essence of the Tao Te Ching's teaching in the context of feeling different is clear. Embrace your unique path, approach others with compassion rather than judgment, and let every encounter, pleasant or otherwise, be a source of growth and gratitude. Remember, once you too might have been a similar journey as those who you now find so different. Let that shared human experience be a bridge of understanding and patience. Ernst Younger and the concept of Anak from the book Umesville. Ernst Younger, a prolific German writer born in the late 19th century, led an extraordinary life. His experiences range from serving as a soldier in both world wars to becoming one of Germany's most controversial and influential authors. Throughout his works, Younger grappled with themes of war, technology, and the nature of modernity. Yet, it's his later writings, particularly 
Eumes will, where he delves deep into the concept of the individual's relationship with society. Eumes will is set in a post-apocalyptic world ruled by a tyrant, the Condor. In this backdrop, Junger introduces the character of the Anarch, a bartender and historian who serves as the novel's reflective voice. The Anarch embodies a philosophy that is neither anarchistic in the political sense nor submissive to authoritarian rule. Instead, it represents a unique synthesis, an individual who remains internally liberated while still conforming, at least superficially, to the external norms of the society he inhabits. Imagine living in a strict regime where personal freedoms are curtailed and most forms of self-expression are forbidden. While many might openly rebel, risking severe consequences, the Anarch would choose a different path. Externally, he might wear the uniform, follow the rules and even participate in the society's rituals. However, internally, he remains entirely free. In his mind, he critiques, analyzes and even ridicules the system, but his outward demeanor betrays none of this. He is not driven by a desire for open rebellion, but by the pursuit of personal freedom and autonomy. In his heart and mind, he is untouchable by the regime, a free spirit navigating an unfree world. Ernst Younger's Anarch is a reminder that even when faced with societal pressures and norms that we might not agree with, there's a choice in how we respond. Open rebellion isn't always the answer, nor is complete submission. The Anarch teaches us that while societies may impose physical constraints, they cannot chain the free spirit of an individual unless allowed. In the modern world, filled with its pressures and expectations, this philosophy is especially resonant. Even if our values di diverge from the mainstream, there's no need to be confrontational or overly defiant. What truly matters is the internal freedom we cultivate, ensuring that in our hearts we remain autonomous and the third and truly free. The science behind conformity and individualism. Throughout human history, societies have oscillated in their value systems, often emphasizing materialistic, extrinsic goals such as wealth, status and appearance over more intrinsic pursuits related to personal growth, relationships and community contribution. But what are the implications of these value systems on individual and collective well-being? A seminal study by Kasser and Ryan in 1996 shed light on this. They found that an overemphasis on extrinsic goals was correlated with poorer mental health outcomes, lower self-actualization and even less satisfying relationships. On the other hand, individuals who prioritized intrinsic goals showed higher levels of well-being, self-esteem and overall life satisfaction. The psychology of conformity. Humans as societal creatures have an innate desire to belong and be accepted by their peer group. This Longing can sometimes manifest as conformity even when it goes against one's personal beliefs or perceptions. Solomon Asher's experiments in the 1950s illustrated just how powerful this pull can be. Participants in his study were willing to agree with an obviously incorrect majority opinion on, on a visual judgment task, highlighting the compelling nature of group conformity. The Ash conformity experiments serve as a stark reminder that our perceptions and beliefs can be swayed by the mere desire to fit in. But is there a silver lining for those who dare to tread off the beaten path according to science? Indeed, there is. Research has illuminated several advantages to non-conformity. Individuals who resist the pull of the majority often exhibit heightened creativity. By not adhering to 
strictly established norms, they can think outside the box, leading to innovative solutions and ideas. Additionally, these non-conformists often show increased resilience by constantly navigating a world that might not always understand and or accept them. They develop a thicker skin and adaptability. Their unique perspectives also make them invaluable problem solvers, bringing diverse viewpoints to the table. In a study called Non-Conformism as Precursor for Self-Efficacy and Well-Being among School Teachers in the Netherlands, it was shown that self-efficacy is positively related to effective well-being and strongly negatively related to burnout. The results of this study also showed non-conformism to be a significant predictor for self-efficacy. Because of strategic importance of human capital in schools, it is important practitioners are provided with tangible suggestions such as non-conformist behavior to improve self-efficacy and well-being. To quote from the article, the positive effects of self-efficacy are commonly explained by societal cognitive theory which states that self-efficacious people have believe in their capabilities and are persistent to attain performance in the face of obstacles. Previous research has shown that self-efficacy has a negative effect on burnout and a positive effect on well-being. The results of a number of other studies have shown that the level of self-efficacy has a positive effect on employee performance and work engagement in which self-efficacy is considered a personal resource. Another theory that affects well-being is the self-determination theory, in which autonomy is an important source of general psychological well-being. Previous studies have shown that autonomy as a job resource is a driver for work engagement. Autonomy can be juxtaposed to control in which behavior is regulated by external forces such as societal pressures, group norms, regulations or compliance. Acting in accord with group norm might be experienced as conformity and thus as a threat to autonomy rather than an expression of it. People who are less susceptible to regulation, societal pressure or group norms feel less obligated to conform and experience more autonomy. The pressure to conform can lead to lower work engagement lower productivity and a lower level of innovation. According to Chino, there should be a balance between conformity and non-conformity in employees so that on the one hand the existing agreements on operational management are carried out, but on the other hand these agreements are not accepted as the status quo. The concept of non-conformity literally means any behavior that is not conformity. According to Neil et al., non-conformity consists of two subtypes, independence and anti-conformity. Independence is defined as behavior or belief that results when the influence target gives zero weight to the norms, positions or standards of another or others. Anti-conformity is defined as behavior or belief that is not consistent with the norms, positions or standards of another or others based on one or more motives of the influence target. Non-conformity can be perceived as admirable behavior that reflects high levels of autonomy and control from an Etymological view, autonomy is indicated by autos, meaning self, and nomos, meaning rule or law. Thus, autonomous individuals tend to act independently and behave according to their own rules. According to self-determination theory, autonomy and self-perceived competence are fundamentally 
universal psychological needs that are important for motivation and psychological well-being. Previous studies have shown that autonomy as a job resource is a driver for work engagement. The self-determination theory makes a distinction between autonomous motivation and controlled motivation. Controlled motivation comes from the need or pressure to carry out an action. Both forms of autonomy occur voluntarily. According to the self-determination theory, there are factors that influence people's activation or passivity and responsibility or laziness. In a social environment, people can be activated due to their basic need for self-development and their curiosity. There are also factors that encourage passivity and negativity, such as excessive control, suboptimal challenges, and a lack of social cohesion. Autonomy can be juxtaposed to control in which behavior is regulated by external forces, such as social pressures, group norms, regulations, or compliance. Acting in accord with a group norm might be experienced as conformity, and thus as a threat to autonomy rather than an expression of it, which can lead to people taking the initiative less or taking responsibility less, and over time it can even lead to stress and psychological conditions. In this study, conformity was defined as involving characteristic willingness to identify with others and emulate them, to give in to others to avoid conflict and generally to be a follower rather than a leader in terms of ideas, values and behaviors. The degree of conformity results from social interactions and is related to individual differences. It has been shown that resistance to conformity arises when the individual experiences being forced to conform, which restricts that individual's own freedom of choice. This motivates a person to react in order to overturn this restriction on freedom of choice. The pressure to conform might thus lead to lower work engagement, lower productivity and a lower level of innovation. In conclusion, while the social pressure to conform can be immense and the path of individualism fraught with challenges, the benefits of following one's compass can lead to unparalleled personal growth and social advancement. Every individual we encounter is on a unique journey with their own set of experiences, challenges and lessons. When we approach others with empathy, we recognize this fact and it can act as a powerful antidote to judgment. Judgment, more often than not, is a reflection of our own insecurities. When we feel confident in our path, there's little need to critique another's. The ancient wisdom in understanding that everyone is fighting their own battle stands true even today. By cultivating an empathetic heart, we can bridge the divides that superficial differences create. Choosing a path of self-improvement or personal growth is commendable, but one must be wary of the shadow it can cast a sense of superiority. This self-view of inherent superiority due to divergent values or aspirations can be a dangerous pitfall. Not only does it alienate us from others, but it also clouds our own personal growth journey. The essence of true accomplishment lies in humility and mutual respect. When we transform self-improvement into a tool for clothing or superiority, we diminish its essence, equating it to materialistic achievements like a new car or a fancy gadget. True growth lies in internal transformation, not external validation. Practical tips for navigating a world where you feel different. In a world where traditional norms are constantly being challenged, there's an emerging community of like-minded individuals seeking more profound fulfillment. 
with the rise of the internet, finding your tribe, people who share your values, beliefs and aspirations has become easier than ever. By connecting with such individuals, not only do you find support and validation, but you also discover avenues to expand and refine your own perspectives. Loneliness can be an unintended side effect of walking a path less trodden. However, if we shift our perspective from solely self-centric goals to a broader vision of influence in social chains, our endeavors take on a deeper meaning. When our self-improvement becomes a beacon for others, our motivation soars. This pure intent of benefiting every human being rather than just oneself acts as a protective shield against the pitfalls of loneliness and superiority. The key lies in breaking free from the chains of societal extrinsic goals, not merely finding a different route to the same destination. Despite feeling out of sync with mainstream society, it's essential to engage with it constructively. This means building relationships, participating in community events and even engaging in conversations that challenge our views. All the while, the principle to stay true to one's beliefs, acting as a beacon of change, not a critic. Through constructive engagement, we not only enrich our own lives, but also sow the seeds for broader societal transformation. As we wrap up this episode, let's take a moment to reflect on the tapestry of human experience. Each of us weaves our own unique thread colored by our own beliefs, aspirations and choices. Yet, as individual as these threads may be, they come together to form the grand mosaic of society. Embracing our distinct path is not just such about celebrating our individuality, but also about recognizing and respecting the myriad journeys that intersect with us. In a world that often values conformity, it can be daunting to tread an unconventional path. But remember, every trailblazer, every visionary who has brought about change did so by breaking free from the mold. So to all our listeners out there, cherish your individuality. Don't view it as a burden, but as a beacon, a light that not only guides your way, but also illuminates the path for countless others seeking to find their own voice amidst the cacophony. While seeking like-minded individuals is a great way to bolster motivation and chains, do not throw away your old acquaintances for sticking to their old habits. Enjoy your time with them from a vantage of slight detachment, being grateful for them for showing how far you have come. Take the same perspective on society, enjoy the opportunities it offers, but don't be blinded by shared illusions, thereby making use of the machine while being more than just another cog in the system. Stay true, stay brave, and always remember, your uniqueness is your strength. Let it show. Thank you for listening, good listener, and for sticking with us for the first season of Mindset Forge. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Mindset Forge. I hope you found it informative and the lessons and practices spoken in it relevant to your situation. I also hope you found it as entertaining to listen as I found making it to be. If you found it beneficial, be sure to follow Mindset Forge on Spotify as well as on YouTube where you can also give us a thumbs up. Also make sure to check out our Discord server for further discussion where you can contact me directly. Links in description and channel information. There you can also find the link to my book which I have self-published on Amazon called Death Drive. If speculative dystopian near-future sky-fi sounds like a cup of tea, 
getting the book is a great way to support my work as an author. So have a nice day and memento querebrum formare.